Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. There are places that are very challenging for me to go, like zoos. Yeah. Because we have a lot of animals that are very angry. And that is not what they signed up for in the sense of their mm -hmm. species. So, it, it, yes, it strikes me if one wishes to open oneself up to animal communication that you have to take a hard look at uh, the human race and, and yeah. how I once, many years ago, participated with a uh, group of people doing psychic work communicating with dolphins. And uh, we we're sort of in a, a mutual hypnotic trance-like experience, and we said, mm -hmm. well, just for fun, let's go over to Marine World, Africa, mm -hmm. USA, mm -hmm. that they had in the San Francisco Bay Area at the time. Let's talk to a dolphin. And people are all sharing. This is all recorded on audio tape. Okay, we're in touch with a dolphin. It's female. She's isolated. She's alone in her tank, separated from all the other dolphins because she's not cooperative and seems sick. And her name is D or starts with a D. And the first thing that we got from this dolphin is, help rescue me. <laughs> Get me out of here. Yeah. And we went over to Marine World and talk to the dolphin trainers who are very open to, yeah. you know, the, a group of people who think they're psychic. Right. They had a dolphin just like that named Dandi. And we began uh, doing to demonstrate that there was some real telepathic communication going on. We mm. began giving Dandi telepathic instructions to perform various maneuvers that they do in the dolphin show. And this was all videotaped and... Uh, <sighs> So, so we got good data statistically that yeah. Dandi was, in fact, communicating with us in this fashion, but we were never able to free her. No, I know. It is really challenging. Mm -hmm. There are animals that do understand that they are giving their lives for humans to learn. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most challenging things that happened to me as a child was that my brother found a, a chinchilla mm -hmm. outside of where we used to play. Yeah. And he brought the chinchilla home, and we had it for a, a week or two. And I asked if I could take it to school for show and tell. So I took it to school. I think I was in the third grade, fourth mm -hmm. grade. And the teacher said, well, just put it outside in the yard, and we'll bring it in. So they put it out on the playground. When she sent me out to get it, it had died from the heat because it was on blacktop, oh. sun, and I brought it in. I carried that for 40 years. Oh, yeah. I was so hurt. And finally, the master chinchilla showed up and said to me, Miranda, the only time an animal's wife, life is wasted is if the human doesn't learn. Mm. And I know that teacher learned. I mean, no, I learned. Mm -hmm. All of us learned. Mm -hmm. So it is. It, I'm not excusing that it's okay to kill animals that way, mm -hmm. but um, I am saying there are large lessons that can be learned. 